Good morning. Just waiting for the counter. Hello, hello. Are we there? Good morning. How is everyone today? Hi, I'm Anna with Anna Walker Designs and StabThingsIntoExistence.com. Welcome. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, I had a wonderful visit with a former boss and a fellow fiber lover yesterday, um, Dr. Kathy Menzi, and I introduced her to a fiber preparation that she had never heard of. And so I thought maybe it's a good time for us to talk texture again. Um, and so while I have said that, you know, if I've got to show my hands, I'm going to go two cameras, I have a new stand for the laptop. And it's going to make it easy for me to just gently flip down so that I can show you all of the wonderful textures that I have here on the work table right now. And we're going to talk about different ones of them. I'll show you examples of how I've used them and how you could use them or give you some ideas maybe on how you can use these different fiber preparations to give your felting a little bit of texture um, because that's part of the love of this medium as far as I'm concerned. It's the fact that it pulls in the tactile nature. It pulls in your fingertips and you get to feel the different textures of the wools and other fibers that you're using. So let me turn the camera down and we'll get started here. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about are yarns. Now, yarns are fiber preparation. They are, and I've got several different types here. Now, you can find wool yarns in single ply like this. You can find wool yarns in, you know, every type and style that you can imagine. These are beautiful to use in your projects, especially if you need to get some lines. Um, so think about, you know, the wool yarns that are out there or that you might have little bits left over in a stash. I have a bag that's filled with little balls like this and smaller of wool yarns that were left over from other projects that I can then use in my felting projects. So the ones that work really nice to give texture are things like this fuzzy yarn. I mean, this gives you some great texture here. Same with this one. I mean, you see all the little hairs that just sort of jump out from the center core. Those are beautiful for giving you a little bit of texture, perhaps in a scarf. Um, I call these the scribble scarves. And I've just used this yarn that's got these wonderful little, you know, snippets of confetti color in it on a, you know, white background. And it just gives some beautiful texture and movement to this scarf. Now, there's also, I'm gonna move these off to the side as I talk about them. This is a recycled sari silk yarn that I purchased from Darn Good Yarn Company. And the wonderful thing about this is because they're small bits of recycled sari silk, they're very, very tightly woven. So, so tightly spun, rather not woven, so tightly spun that they are overspun. Okay, so that means that if you unspin them, if you cut off a piece and you unspin it, you can get those beautiful fibers just coming out and jumping up, I'm trying to get the right spot, there we go, jumping out and giving you some lovely texture that you can play with in your felting project. And the Recycled Sari Silk Yarn comes in, in sort of shades. Um, there are different blends. I think this one was a, a berry um, blend, but they, they've got different color tones to them. And so when they, um, when Darn Good Yarn um, gets them and, and they've been spun, they've been, you know, put in certain colorways. So you can get, you know, a ball of each of the colorways and oh my gosh, you've got skeins to last you and, and fiber to last you for embellishment for a very, very long time. Um, and what I used this recycled, sorry, silk yarn for is the center of this flower. It just gives us, I just took and then 
cut lengths about like this and then in the very center of the length to hold it together I stabbed it really really well so that it was complete and I even took a couple of stitches just to make sure it wouldn't come loose and then I played with unspinning this yarn to fluff it out there in the very center for that lovely little center of that flower. So that's another way that you can use the yarns. Now this is one, a, a thick and thin yarn. I think I got it at Woolfest years ago. Um, it was um, beautiful, you know, greens and purples, and those are those are my love language. And adding these little bits to a project just gives you some lovely texture and color. I could see this, you know, used to build up, I don't know, it could be any, you could use these bits and cut them off and use them for flowers. Um, you could use them to create a, you know, heart shape, whatever you want. You've got this wonderful thick and thin. And then I did a little of my own. I, I use a drop spindle every once in a while when I need a particular color. Um, and I did a little thick and thin, not on purpose. This was just how I spun it <laughs> because I'm not a spinner. I'm a felter. Um, so a little, you know, lovely thick and thin. I'm going to see if I can get some lighter colors here so you can see this a little better. But you can see the texture that you can get by using a beautiful hand spun yarn like this. So that's another way that you can use yarns in your work. The next thing we're going to talk about is neps. Neps are what I introduced Kathy to yesterday. And neps, have you ever, you know, taken a, a wool sweater or garment out of the wash or you've um, taken a look at the underarm area of a sweater and you notice that it's pilling up on you? Well, that's similar to what neps are. Neps are little bits of balls of wool that are left over from the carding process that puts them into bats or puts them into rovings. And these little bits can add some incredible texture to your felt work. Now, I will tell you, there are numerous sizes. Um, I have these as well that are slightly larger than the other than the white neps but you can see that they can give you a, a lovely texture these would be beautiful for adding some bushy texture to a landscape perhaps and these i have used to create um allium or baby's breath or queen anne's lace look in a felted painting now you can get these in a variety of colors as you can see from the table here. But I wanted to show you how I use the neps. And that'll segue into our next application. But I use the neps to bring us this flower detail. Now the one thing I'll tell you about using neps, you do want to trap them with a little bit of wool so that they grab hold really, really well to your wet felting or your needle felting um, that you're doing. And if you're doing needle felting with neps, you want to um, be very careful because um, when you're stabbing with your felting needle, those neps can get skewered on there just like shish kebab on a kebab. So you want to be very careful. And if you look closely, you'll notice I've got a few neps on this painting that are a little on the loose side. That's just adding that bit of texture. Um, yes, I added some stitching in addition to the extra wool. But the neps give you, especially when you look at it from afar, it gives you that look of Allium or Queen Anne's Lace or Baby's Breath. And it's a lovely way to use neps to give you texture. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is silk, so I'm going to flip it over. This is the other half of this painting. And the pink and purpley flowers here were created using silk. I use silks of a several different, the greens even here, um, that you see, the little bright pops of green and, and lime green that you see are also silk. I used a couple of different um, 
preparations of silk to create these flower designs here, um, but they bring a lovely sheen and a beautiful shine to any felting project that you're doing. The only thing about using silk <clears throat> is rather like neps, you have to make sure that that silk is lightly encapsulated by your wool fibers so that it will get trapped with the wool and will felt in because silk does not felt on its own. It has to be attached via the felting process to other wools that do felt, whether it's wool, alpaca, you know, cashmere, mohair, whatever, but you've got to have a feltable fiber surrounding the silk in order to get it to felt in appropriately. And that's because silk doesn't have scales. Now, this is a new um, batch of silk that I've gotten. Generally speaking, in the past, I have worked with um, silk hankies or silk rovings um, an awful lot. But I got these different colors of silk noil because I loved the texture. And I'm going to hold it just here above the white and I'll try and get it up closer. But you can see that this silk has, I'm going to pull it out and draft it out here a little bit. This silk has a beautiful lumpy bumpy kind of texture to it. Now again, you've got to make sure that you encapsulate this into um, other fibers that will felt, but you can't see it very well. I'm going to try and get it up close. See if we can, can you see those lumps and bumps that look kind of like, like uh, the silk, the neps in the background? It has those little bumps in there and that can add some incredible texture to your piece when you add some silk noil to it. And it doesn't take a lot. I pinched off an, an awful big amount there, but just take it and you can either draft it out or you can just fluff it out and you'll see those textures start to arrive in that little cloud that you're creating. And this would make an incredible little flower. Um, imagine, oh, there, it even almost perfectly did a flower shape there. But imagine this laid down on top of your silk, uh, on top of your wool background, add some different colors for the centers there, and you've got a beautiful flower when you get done wet felting. But lovely texture with the silk noil. Now, when we're talking texture, you always have to think about locks. Now, locks are how the fiber looks when it comes off of the sheep. And oftentimes you can get cleaned, dyed locks in assorted colors that can add some amazing texture to your felt, whether it is a felt vessel that you want to add a little bit of textural detail to, so you've added it on the outside of it, or whether it's maybe a pumpkin or a gourd or something that's going to be um, a sculpture and you want to add some curls and some fluff. That's what you want to use locks for. Locks are amazing for texture. And you can find texture from extraordinarily fine crimp. I mean, the crimp in this, meaning the curl, is so fine that you have to really get up close to be able to see those curls. And then the crimp in this is very obvious. I mean, you've got that curl right there. And the crimp is going to range from large to almost microscopic, depending on the breed of the sheep. Different sheep have different crimps. This one's got a lovely crimp in it. See that cute little curl in there? So you can use this for wet felting, for needle felting. But I pulled one of each of these, a lock of each of these aside so that you can see the crimps side by side. And isn't that amazing how different they are? But they've all got that beautiful curl that you can use to give some texture to your felt project. It's, it's always a good thing to go with locks and to have an assortment handy because they can give you some amazing texture. So 
a few things to think about for texture for your felting project. Um, I hope I've given you some things that you might be able to work with. And if you want to, you know, continue learning more and you want more than just, you know, the few minutes that I do Monday through Friday, the felted experience just might be the thing for you. Um, you get a monthly video tutorial that you can take on your time, your schedule. You get um, the access to the other members of the group and to me on a weekly basis through a Zoom call, through our private Facebook group, and you've got that community that can help you grow your own felting uh, work and we share, we, we give each other ideas, we help encourage one another, and it's a wonderful little exclusive group that we'd love for you to be a part of. Now, the cart's going to close on the Felted Experience Wednesday night at midnight, so don't miss your chance to sign up for this uh, fun little community, and you just need to go to stabthingsintoexistence.com, and you'll find all the information there. So, until tomorrow, I will uh, talk to you later. I'm thinking about doing a live Q&A and moving our live tomorrow to uh, later in the day. So um, watch the page. I'll put all the details up there here um, later on this afternoon. And until then, go stab something into existence. We'll talk to you later. Bye.